Welcome and hello, far away to into it here, your host for today's HRM 5 for now. Today's topic is fostering learning and development in the workplace. Learning and development, often known as training and development, are vital components of an organization's human resources. The purpose of learning and development is to synchronize the objectives and performance of employees within those of the organization. Those in charge of learning and development inside an organization must identify skill gaps across people and teams, then plan and provide training to close those gaps. Managers of training and development lead the team. As you can see, these are the responsibilities of training and development managers. Evaluate employee organizational and personal growth. Ensure learning and development are aligned with the organization's goal. Optimize training methods to maximize return on investment ROI. Manage and acquire learning and development technologies for project facilitation and administration. Create e-learning courses, group training, and other educational products. The training and development manager is also responsible for effective training, manage learning and development staff, learning and development budget management, promoting training programs to get managerial and staff support. Why learning and development is so important? Okay, first and foremost, employees expect learning opportunities. When applying for a job, candidates consider learning and growth opportunities. Businesses must invest in staff development to attract top personnel. Second, recruitment costs more than retention. Losing productive employees can't be quantified, but it's terrible. Retaining employees is cheaper than separating, recruiting, and losing productivity. Invested employees will remain longer. Investing in learning and development helps organizations keep employees. Learning and development boosts employee productivity and confidence in themselves and their business. The third one, training boosts profits. Workers are companies' greatest asset, right? Indeed, a good team can do anything. Businesses may enhance their profit by addressing knowledge gaps and upskilling employees by exploiting their skills. Equipping staff to do their jobs better is smart. As a manager, they must elicit each employee's best performance. Coaching and training enable employees to succeed. Fourth, untrained employees can reach an organization. Companies must create a safe and welcoming workplace. Learning and development reduce employee turnover, attract new personnel, and enhance a company's bottom line by making it more innovative and more productive. Learning and development also oversee risk mitigation through compliance and safety training. Employers may educate employees on proper workplace ethics to promote a safe and inclusive workplace. Practical ethics training may increase employee performance and lessen the risk of a lawsuit for breaking industry safety and behavior requirements. Fifth, customer satisfaction and service. Customers view corporate workers as knowledge sharing specialists. When a customer waits on hold or makes an appointment to chat, staff must know about their company's products. I don't know, but I'll contact you. It's okay. It's preferable to communicate in that information through consumer value replies. Empowering employees to have excellent client discussions boosts customer satisfaction. Issue or challenges in fostering learning and development in the workplace. First, frantic employee schedule. Training can add to their stress when employees are exhausted by jobs, family, and other commitments. Invading employees' time with training creates resistance and hostility to training. Second, dispersed workforce. Remote work and a dispersed workforce have created training and development issues. When teaching a geographically scattered force, misconceptions and cultural differences can lead to uneven instruction. Some cultures are less comfortable commenting online than others. Third, different learning habit. It's important to consider student preferences and habits whether you are educating 20 or 2,000 learners. At least three generations in the workforce have fundamentally different digital attitudes. If you believe all employees are tech-savvy and have the exact knowledge and learning patterns, your training will be less successful. Fourth, lack of engagement. Cognitive, emotional, and behavioral engagement are essential. Poor information retention, passive learning, and lack of dedication hinder training and growth. Without learning engagement, behavior change is impossible. Most learners drop out when instruction feels irrelevant or useless. Fifth, non-applicable training. Many training programs are overly broad and not tailored to jobs or abilities. This creates training problems. Generic training can waste learners' time and patience with irrelevant information. Six, cost, cost, and cost. Small training funds 
high training needs, facilitation, equipment, venue rental, and employee time make training expensive. Travel and software expenditures add to training and development issues on a tight budget. So what are the solutions? First, limit travel and weekend training. Consider micro-learning and bite-sized material. Short films, checklists, infographics, and GIF are accessible micro-learning forms. Using images, communicate many ideas. They save time and provide a respite from reading emails, reports, and newsletters. Prioritize short, simple tests. This gives rapid feedback on learning progress. Mobile and able training, learners may assess training materials on the train to work or during lunch break with mobile features. This simplifies training. Number two, social media may unite a scattered team. Video conferences, webinars, and online forums develop trust and empathy among remote team members. Or glue. Seminars and webinars may discuss questions, concerns, and experiences. Start with clear goals. All team members should know what to expect during training and how their learning will assist them at work. Consider developing a training agreement, detailing these requirements, and asking each learner to sign it. The third one, conduct a requirement analysis to establish your audience learning preferences, particularly technological comfort. Use research to develop training. Choose easy-to-use software, user-friendly interface that is UI. Seamless user experience benefits all learners, not just tech challenge ones. Pausing a movie or downloading a project should be simple. Communicate including tech support. Use discussion boards to let learners ask questions and get material and technical help. Use video, notes, and visuals to accommodate diverse learning styles. Fourth, Include case studies, scenarios, role plays, and realistic examples in training. These exercises encourage problem solving and cognitive engagement. Use discussion forums and other online areas for informal learning. This increases emotional engagement between learners and the training process. Creating an active learning culture and involving all employees helps improve emotional engagement. This boosts learning. Communicate learning outcomes early to boost behavior. Understanding the purpose of learning activities increases participation. Fifth, sort learning outcomes into must-have and nice-to-have for each position. Use gamification to motivate learners to engage with nice-to-have material. Only make necessary training mandatory. Use just-in-time training to upgrade skills or impart new knowledge. Use case studies and scenarios to highlight the program's job relevance. Conduct post-training feedback surveys to understand what learners found most valuable and where training may be improved. And the last one, online training. Online training eliminates travel, venue, and facilitation costs. Use an efficient learning management system that is LMS. Training a significant number of personnel will stretch your money far. Focus on the most right bang for your buck content types. Short text portions with comments can reduce development expenses. We come to the conclusion. A learning and development culture has value and is worth investing in. When correctly deployed, workers can help firms thrive in productivity, profit, innovation and expansion and they do it happily. A workplace that doesn't engage its employees may suffer a drop in excitement, productivity and staff turnover. If you appreciate your staff, you must provide a learning atmosphere. Small firms with little resources may find it challenging to implement. If you are devoted to the process, some improvements can improve office culture. Thank you.